Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, December 8th, and as you can see here in the aim today, our goal for this video is going to be about reformulating our equation for the acceleration due to gravity. Now, just a, a quick note about where we've been and where we're going. Right now, we are in the middle of the gravity unit. As it turns out, as far as things that are explicitly covered on the AP exam, this is really the last of the new information for gravity. We are actually basically done with gravity already. It's not a whole lot in the course. Having said that, there is another topic which we are going to cover tomorrow, which although not being explicitly covered on the AP exam, I think is really, really important. And so we are going to take another day to do that tomorrow. Now, the reason why we are going to cover this topic tomorrow, even though it's not on the AP exam, is because I think it really is sort of like a, a really important big picture idea. It makes a lot of connections between the gravity unit that we're talking about right now, the unit we're actually going to do next, and a unit that we're going to end up doing later on in the year, probably sometime around February. And so the basic idea here is that while the topic we are going to talk about tomorrow is not explicitly on the AP test, I think having covered it, and when you hopefully reach a pretty good understanding of it, you'll be able to see the relationships between different topics in a more sort of cohesive way, which is actually really important for the AP test, in my opinion, because the AP test is all about making big picture connections between these important concepts. And so uh, really what I decided to do for today and tomorrow is since we only have these two topics left, we could probably get away with starting and finishing this topic that we're going to do in this video, starting the next topic, having to stop it because the video is going to get too long and then wrapping it up tomorrow. I don't think that makes any sense here. So we're just going to do one video on this particular topic today about reformulating our equation for the acceleration due to gravity. And then we will do one video on this sort of supplementary topic tomorrow. And then that'll basically be it for gravity. Now, even though that topic tomorrow is not explicitly covered on the AP exam, like I said, I do think it will enrich your understanding. And it is actually interesting that the AP course curriculum guide says, hey, this kind of stuff is not actually on the test, but you may want to teach it to your kids because it'll help them understand how this stuff works. And I agree. And so that's what we're going to do. And so as you can see here in the aim today, as we've mentioned already, we've got another day talking about the acceleration due to gravity. So let's talk about where we've been. In the video yesterday, we started talking about how we can calculate the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of a planet. Now you have known for years now, literally, that the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared in magnitude. What we would like to do for upper level physics, in which we did on Monday, is we talked about how you can calculate that value. And what we saw, not only did we calculate it, but we derived it, that you can do this calculation pretty easy. And you can actually derive the equation pretty easy. We showed this slide on yeah, uh, on the, in the video yesterday, and we said that for an object in free fall, the net force is equal to the gravitational force. And that means that if we take the equation for the net force as described by Newton's second law, F net equals MA, so we wrote MA, and then we say that's equal to the equation that we have for gravity, gm1, m2 over r squared, that the mass of the object cancels because the mass of the object is the object that's experiencing the gravitational force and the mass of the object also appears in the gravity equation, it cancels. The inertial mass, which is this mass here in this equation, as described by Newton's second law, is equal to the gravitational mass, and so those cancel. And what we end up with when we 
have that mass cancel is that the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of a planet or star or sun or whatever uh, is equal to G M over R squared, where G, of course, is our universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. Our M here is just the mass of the planet or star or, you know, any celestial object. And the R in that equation, notice, is left over from Newton's universal law of gravitation. And so that's going to be the distance between the centers. Now, I've added to this slide a little diagram here, which shows that it's very important to remember R, especially the R in Newton's universal law of gravitation, always means the distance between the centers. Now, like I said, the gravity unit is coming to a close here pretty soon, but we are going to continue to use situations where there is gravity when we get to units later on, like rotational motion and energy and circular motion. And so it's important to realize that even though we are basically almost done talking about gravity by itself, this gravity equation is not going away. And whenever the R from this equation is left over, it means the distance between the centers. But the whole point that we were trying to make in the video yesterday is that for an object which is sitting right on the surface of a planet, the distance between the centers of those objects, for all intents and purposes, is the radius of the planet. Now, if you lift the object or if the object is moved to a location or some height that is well above the surface of the Earth, then you would have to use the sum of the radius of the planet and its height above the surface of the planet. But it's important to remember that in the vast majority of situations, the R in this equation, while being the distance between the centers, officially, most of the time, you'll just end up using the radius of the planet. And so as you saw in the aim today, this equation is perfectly good, but we'd like to reformulate it. And an important question to ask here is like, well, why do we need to reformulate our equation for the acceleration to, to gravity? And the basic answer is because that's what the AP test wants you to do. And we know that this is what the AP test wants us to do because the AP test asks questions that look like this. It says, calculate the acceleration due to gravity on planet H, which has the same density as the Earth, but twice the radius. And so if you've noticed here, as I've underlined in this slide, there are questions on the AP test which ask you about acceleration due to gravity while talking about the density of the object, in this case, planet, planet H. And so what we would like to do, because this question kind of demands it, is we would like to reformulate our equation for the acceleration due to gravity to include the density of the object. And so notice here in our original version of the equation, there is no term for the density. And what we'd like to do is derive an equation where we can work in the density of the object. And we're going to do that here in a minute. But the first thing I want to do just to kick us off here is I'd like you to write down a couple of important notes related to this topic. And I'd like you to write this under the heading, density dependent gravitational acceleration. And so the first thing we'll say here is that the mass of a celestial object is important. And so is its radius, because they give us information about the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of that celestial object. On the other hand, though, the density of a celestial object is also very important to astronomers, as the density can help to give information about the composition of that celestial object. Remember, this goes back to the... Uh, adjacent spheres gravity problem that we were talking about the other day. 
if an object is made of the same material as another object, then those objects have the same density. And that's like a pretty easy scientific experiment that you could do. If I tell you, here are five different materials, like let's just say it's like steel, bronze. Well, steel is a, is a combination of different materials. So maybe we won't say steel, but like, let's just say it's like bronze, iron, you know, brass, whatever. If we were given a mystery object and we said, you don't know what this mystery object is, but it's one of those materials, figure out which one it is, finding the density would be a super easy way to do it. Because if we figured out that like this mystery object has the same density as the bronze object, then the thing is made of bronze. You follow? Okay. So let's just write down here also, because this is important, same material same density. And so the idea is when you are trying to do observations, essentially, of a planet or a star that's really, really, really far away, there are scientific instruments which can give us an idea about the density of that object. Like even for the example of the moon, when Astronauts walked on the moon. They took back like boxes and boxes and boxes of, of rocks from the moon. And experiments that scientists back on Earth here did with those moon rocks is finding out things like the density of those rocks. Because that gives us insight into what the moon is made of. And so the last thing we'll say here, obviously, which I mentioned before, is that therefore, because the density is an important uh, number, We'd like to also come up with a version of the equation for the acceleration due to gravity in terms of the density of the celestial object. Go ahead and pause this video here and write those three things down. And when you hit play, we'll go ahead and derive that equation. Okay, so to derive our equation for the acceleration due to gravity in terms of the density. We're going to start with our equation for acceleration due to gravity, gm over r squared. The first thing we're going to want to ask here to get us started with this is how are we going to work in the density of the object to this equation? How are we going to work in the density? Do we know an equation for density? Does that equation for density have any of the terms in that equation in it? And the answer is yes, it's through the mass. And so the density of an object, which remember in upper level physics is given the symbol rho, which is a Greek letter, the density is equal to mass over volume. And so what that tells us is that the mass of an object is equal to the product of the density and the volume. And so essentially what we can do here pretty quickly is we can take the mass out and plug in the density or specifically the product of the density and the volume. And then we're going to go ahead and divide that by r squared as the equation tells us. Now we're going to make an assumption. And the assumption, which for the most part will be pretty accurate, because generally, you know, because you all know the Earth is round and not flat, generally gravity makes things form spheres because it acts in every direction equally and is inversely proportional to r squared. And so generally, when you have this big swirling gas of dust that eventually gets closer and closer and closer together and reacts to become a solid through a process called accretion, the shape that that thing takes is a, is a sphere. So we'll assume the object is spherical. Now, why are we assuming the object is spherical? Because we know... The volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. 
And so our assumption that the object is spherical is really the last thing that we need to do here because we're going to take our equation as we have it written up here. We have G times the density, and now we need to multiply by the volume. And the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then we have that whole thing divided by r squared. And so pretty simply here, notice the r squared in the denominator cancels two of those three r's. And so what we're left over with for our equation for the acceleration due to gravity is 4 thirds, and I'm going to rearrange these just because I think it looks ugly to have the fraction written in the middle like that, 4 thirds g rho pi r. And that's our equation. The acceleration due to gravity is equal to 4 thirds g rho pi r. Let's go ahead and label those terms. So I'm going to rewrite the equation here on the next slide. You don't have to do that if you're just continuing down in a notebook. 4 thirds g rho pi r, where g, of course, is the universal gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. Rho is the density of the object. And just as an important note, you may remember this, but uh, since density rho is equal to m over v, that means the units are going to be kilograms per meter cubed. It has to be in the standard SI units in order to make the units work out here, right? Because if you put it in like grams per centimeter, you're not going to get the proper combination of the units that you need. And we have pi, of course, is pi, so I'm not even going to list that. And r is the radius of the planet. <gasps> or is it? It's really the distance between the centers. Very important thing to remember. And that, of course, is measured in units of meters. And so the first thing that we'll do very quickly is just note that if we take the equation A equals 4 thirds G rho pi r, and we take a look at the units, 4 thirds has no unit. G is a meter cubed per kilogram second squared. I made this box too small here. Rho is measured in kilogram per meter cubed. And the radius, or the distance between the centers, is in meters. So notice this meter cubed cancels that meter cubed. That kilogram cancels this kilogram. And what we're left over with is the acceleration due to gravity in units of meters per second squared. So the units do in fact work out to meters per second squared. That's a good sign that we didn't mess up the derivation. But we also have a pretty good, pretty big question to answer. Does this equation actually work? Well, there's only one way to find out. And we're going to do that by actually using it to do a calculation. So this question here, the first one that I want us to do, says, what is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth? Now, as we just saw, I'm going to go back real fast. We need big G. We need the density. And we need the radius. So in writing down our list of knowns here, we have big G equals 6.67 
times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. We have the radius of the planet given in our reference sheet, if you remember from Last week, I posted a reference sheet with various planetary data. And just going to the last chart on the reference table, or on this reference sheet here, you can see that the radius of the object, the Earth here, is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we'll put here 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. And now we need the density. So we look on our sheet. Orbital radius, orbital period, radius, mass, eccentricity. Mass, radius, period, mean distance from the sun. Period squared over r cubed. Nope. No density. And no density. These tables don't have the density on them. And so it, should you see these on the homework, because remember, this first question that I showed you, the kind of question they ask on the AP test is a one more one rule problem. And so if you are ever doing these calculations on homework and you need the density, just Google what is the density of the Earth. And we have here 5.51 grams per centimeter cubed. Oh, that's annoying. Or is it? Luckily, we spent time talking about how to do these conversions at the beginning of the year. So let's just make sure we remember that. 5.51 grams per centimeter cubed. 5.51 grams per centimeter cubed. And let's just go to a new slide here real quick. 5.51 grams per centimeter cubed. Now we got to do a little unit conversion. So let's get rid of those grams. We'll do that by putting it in the bottom. That means we're going to put the kilograms up top. And we know that for every one kilogram, there are 1,000 grams. And we know that if we want to get rid of that centimeter cubed, we're going to have to put centimeters in the top and make sure we cube our whole conversion factor here. And then we're going to put meters in bottom, and of course, one meter is 100 centimeters. And so if you take 100 cubed, you get 1 million. 100 times 100 times 100. Or really, notice here, this is 10 to the 2 cubed. And so we multiply those exponents here, we get 10 to the 6. So that's a million. And so now we have a million divided by 1,000 right? Because this is a thousand. So we have 10 to the six over 10 to the three. And when you divide powers of 10, you subtract the exponents. So that means this whole conversion factor works out to be a thousand. And so now we have 5.51 times a thousand. And so that means our density here is just going to be 5510. Notice grams cancels grams. So we have kilograms centimeters cubed cancels centimeters cubed. And so we're left over with a meter cubed. 5510 kilograms per meter cubed. So we'll write that down here, 5510 kilograms per meter cubed. And we're looking for the acceleration due to gravity. And so our equation here, as we mentioned, is A equals 4 thirds G rho pi R. And so we have A equals 4 thirds G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared times rho, 5510 kilogram per meter cubed times pi. I'll put that in parentheses too just to format it like the rest of the equation. And then we multiply by the radius which is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. 
And if you take your calculator and you type in all of those numbers here, four thirds times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, that kind of looks like a four, by the way, that's an 11, times 5510 times pi times 6.37 times 10 to the six, you get that the acceleration is 9.806. Meters per second squared, or to three sig figs, 9.81 meters per second squared. Look at that. And so now we know for sure this equation really works. Pretty cool. Now, as I mentioned, the vast majority of these problems that you're going to see, and really just because that's how. Uh, they're asked on the AP test. These kind of questions are really just going to be one, one, one rule problems. And so what we'd like to do is we'd like to take a quick look at a one, one, one rule problem. But before we do that, I think we have to address a really, really, really important question. Because if you are thinking about it carefully, I hope a really important question has come to mind because we can ask quite a good question here about these equations. And that question would be, what is the relationship between the acceleration due to gravity and the radius of the planet or the distance between the centers? That's an easy question. You just look at the equation. Obviously, according to this equation, the acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to r squared. And obviously, according to this equation, the acceleration due to gravity is directly proportional to r. What? We have a big problem on our hands. We have two equations for the acceleration due to gravity. They both definitely work. We use this equation to calculate the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. We got 9.81. We did that yesterday. We used this equation just now to calculate the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth, and we got 9.81. What's the relationship between the acceleration due to gravity and R? I want you to write this down. This is very important. Why? I want you to write down the question, too. Why does it make sense that the density-dependent acceleration due to gravity equation tells us that the acceleration due to gravity is directly proportional to the radius when the original form tells us the acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to the radius. And really, it says inversely proportional to the radius squared. I want you to take a second to pause this video here and write that down. And while you're writing that down, I want you to think about that. How does that make sense? And when you hit play, we'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about the answer. Okay, so the key here is in looking at the question. The question, and let's go all the way back to the very beginning where we looked at the question. The question says calculate the acceleration due to gravity on planet H, which has the same density as the Earth, but twice the radius. And so it's important to realize if we're talking about keeping the density the same, you have to realize that density is mass over volume. And that that means we can write mass as being density times volume. And if the density is in fact the same, then that means the density as a constant, establishes the relationship that the mass is directly proportional to r cubed. And so the basic idea here is that if we only change the radius of the planet while leaving the density constant, then we'd also have to change the mass and we'd have to increase it to keep the density constant, right? Think about m over v as a fraction. The r cubed in the volume if the radius got bigger, the volume would increase. So to keep the proportion the same, so that the density was the same, the mass would have to go up too. 
And so since the mass is directly proportional to r cubed, while the acceleration due to gravity is only inversely proportional to r squared, if we account for the density being constant, both equations tell us the same thing. The idea here is that the acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to r squared. Because if we take the equation, a equals 4 thirds g rho pi r, and we put the equation for the density in mass over volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then times pi times r, you can see that that r will cancel one of those r's, and we get that the acceleration is inversely proportional to r squared. So ignore what the density dependent equation seems like it's telling you the relationship between a and r is. Remember, you can only do these kind of comparisons where you say something is directly or inversely proportional to something else if everything else in the equation is constant. And if you do that, keeping the density constant while increasing the radius, then you'd have to increase the mass. And since this equation sort of hides the mass, you'd have to be careful about that. Take a second to pause this video here and write that down. And when you hit play, we'll move on. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. I'm gonna show you one, have you do one on your own, and then that'll be it for today. And so this question here, says calculate the acceleration due to gravity on planet H, which has the same density as the Earth, but twice the radius. And so these kind of questions are pretty simple here. We'd have R prime equals 2R. It's got the same density, so we can say rho prime equals rho, although you wouldn't have to write that. And we're looking for A prime. So the equation for the acceleration due to gravity is 4 thirds G rho pi r. And so that means our a prime here is going to be 4 thirds g rho pi 2r. And the only number we have to pull out to the front is a 2. What we have left over is 4 thirds g rho pi r. And so that means the acceleration due to gravity on planet H is just twice the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. And so that means if A prime is two times 9.8 meters per second squared, it's gonna be 19.6 meters per second squared. And that's it. It's pretty easy with this equation because nothing's squared. Straightforward. Now, I just wanna take a quick second to talk very briefly about the last thing I just said, because I feel like that's pretty confusing. One equation makes it look like A is directly proportional to R. One makes it look inversely proportional to R. How do we possibly reason our way through that? I think maybe looking at it using this problem will help it to make a little more sense. And so the basic idea here is that the R is changing, while the rho is constant. And so a good question to ask here would be, well, what's going to happen to the mass? Well, as we said, the density is mass over volume. So that means mass is rho v, which means it's rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so if the mass is equal to rho times 4 thirds pi r cubed, that means m prime if the density is the same, is 4 thirds rho times pi times 2r cubed. Because remember, we said the, the radius is doubling. And so that means m prime is going to be 2 cubed, or 8, times the old mass. The basic idea is if you are going to double the radius, 
while keeping the density constant, you'd have to increase the mass by a factor of eight. This goes back to that adjacent spheres problem we talked about the other day. If you increase the size, the, the radius, while keeping the density constant, you have to increase the mass. And now, if we used this and this in the old equation, A equals GM over R squared, we'd get A prime is equal to G times 8M over 2R squared, which means we're going to have an 8 in the numerator and a 2 squared or a 4 in the denominator, which means A prime is 8 over 4 times A, or A prime is 2A, which is exactly the result we got from the density version of the equation. The acceleration due to gravity is, in fact, inversely proportional to R squared. This equation is just hiding that fact within it. That's a very important thing for you to understand. I'd like you to take one minute to write yourself a note in your own words about how the acceleration is inversely proportional to R squared. So go ahead, pause this video, write yourself a note for like one minute about how the acceleration is inversely proportional to R squared in your own words. And when you hit play, we'll do one more problem for today and then wrap it up. Okay. Last problem of the day here. It says the newly discovered star has a density equal to one third of the density of the sun and a radius equal to twice the radius of the sun. What is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of this newly discovered star? And I put it here so you didn't have to go back and look for it. Remember, we calculated the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the sun as being 274 meters per second squared. So I'd like you to pause this video and take a couple minutes. What is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of this new star? And when you hit play, we'll go over it, and that'll be it for today. Okay, so your work should look a little something like this. Now, just to go back to the question, they told us here the density is one-third of the density of the sun. And they told us here that the uh, radius of this new star is twice the radius of the sun. And we're looking for the new acceleration due to gravity. So the acceleration due to gravity is four-thirds g rho pi r. And so that means we have four-thirds, for our a prime equation, we have four-thirds g one-third rho times pi times 2r. And so that means if we leave behind in parentheses 4 thirds g rho pi r, we're going to pull out a 2 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator. And so that gives us that our acceleration due to gravity on the new star is 2 thirds the acceleration due to gravity of the sun. And so if we take two thirds times the 274 meters per second squared, which means we actually should be putting that in our list of knowns, then we get this new acceleration, two thirds of 274, as being 182.67 meters per second squared, or 183 meters per second squared. And that's it. The density dependent gravitational acceleration equation says gravitational acceleration is four thirds G rho pi R. That equation suggests that the acceleration due to gravity is directly proportional to the density and directly proportional to the radius. But you got to remember, 
it's hiding the fact that to increase the radius while keeping the density constant requires you to increase the mass. And so the most accurate thing to say still is that the acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to r squared. And with that, that's it for today. Have a good one, everybody.